What do you think it means to be wise? Now, as you consider that question, I want you to think for yourself, who are the people in your life who you would consider to be wise? Who are the people that you would look to for wisdom? Now, typically, as we answer that question, we're going to think of uh, people who are older, whether it's parents or grandparents or maybe your teacher. And it's typically people who not only know a lot about the world and about life, but people who have also lived a lot of life and have a lot of life experience. Now, in answering that question, probably most of us didn't say that the wisest person that we know was our six-year-old brother or sister. And typically, when we are looking uh, for some sage wisdom or advice on life, you're not going to like an eighth grader to get that wisdom. Now, that's no offense to eighth graders, and there's plenty of eighth graders that are really smart and bright and know a lot. But one of our, the really important things we have to do is we're defining what wisdom really is, is understanding that wisdom is more than just facts and information. But wisdom is actually what we know applied through experience and practically in life. J.I. Packer says that wisdom is the practical side of goodness. So wisdom is taking what we know to be true about ourselves, what we know to be true and good about God, and not only knowing it in our heads, but living it out in our lives. Job chapter 12, verse 12, I think really helpfully uh, states exactly what we've been saying. And it says this, chapter 12, verse 12 says, Wisdom is with the aged and understanding in length of days. So in trying to define what wisdom is, I think it's safe to say that wisdom is knowledge plus experience. It's what we know to be true, lived out in time and experience. Now, one of the ways that God is most often described in the Bible is as, oh, God, that is infinitely wise. Now, if we understand that definition of wisdom, that makes perfect sense. Because if wisdom is knowledge plus experience, we know that there is nothing that God doesn't know. And not only is God limitless in his knowledge, but he's also limitless in his experience because the Bible speaks of God as being the ancient of days. He has existed before time. He is the alpha and the omega, and he has no beginning and he has no end. So if wisdom is knowledge plus experience, God is infinite in both knowledge and experience. And so what that means is that in every possible circumstance and situation in life, God always knows the exact best course of action for every circumstance and every situation because he's infinitely wise. Now, as I think about that definition of God's wisdom, it really quickly makes me think of how much I lack wisdom. Because I think of every possible circumstance and situation in my life, even right now, And I go, so often, I just have to throw up my hands and say, I have no idea what to do. I am not always wise. And often, when I have to make the decision of doing what's best and practically applying my knowledge, so often I make the wrong decision. The good news is if you're someone who lacks wisdom, the God who is all wise actually doesn't keep all of that wisdom to himself. And the Bible tells us that God actually freely offers that wisdom to anybody who seeks for it. James chapter 1 verse 5 says that if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously without reproach and it will be given to him. So if you lack wisdom, if you don't know the best course of action in any given circumstance in your life, the Bible tells us that we can just ask God, the God who knows the answer to every question, who knows the perfect path through any course of life. If you just ask God for wisdom, the Bible says that he will freely offer it to us and give it to us generously. What wonderful news that is for people like you and me who are not inherently wise. Now, this is so important to understand 
To be wise is not to the, be the person who always knows the right answer, who fills up their head with as much information and is smarter and better than anyone else. According to this definition of wisdom that we see in James and that we see uh, in so many other places in the Bible, true wisdom, the man, the person who is truly wise, is the one who simply falls down on their face, recognizes that they're not wise, that they lack wisdom, and asks God for something that they don't have. This is essentially, in every area of life, what it means to be a Christian, is to realize that we don't have the thing that we need the most, and that we need to go directly to God to ask for what we don't have. If you lack wisdom today, I just want to encourage you, if you don't know what to do in any area of life, in relationships, in school, and where you're going to go to college, and what you're going to do in the, all the circumstances of this pandemic, I just want to tell you, go to God who gives generously to all without reproach. He'll give you the wisdom that you ask for if you ask him in faith. And you can go to the Bible and you can look and you can see that Jesus is the perfect picture of wisdom in human form. That he lived exactly according to God's will. And because he was God and because he always looked to his Father as the source of wisdom, he lived out the wisdom that you and I naturally don't. And we can look to the Bible and look to uh, the scriptures, which Paul tells us can make us wise for salvation in Jesus Christ. So if you, if you lack wisdom today, which you do, ask God and look to him for wisdom and he will give it to you generously 